Nestled in the mountains of southern Africa lies the beautiful landlocked nation of Swaziland. Despite its picturesque beauty, Swaziland faces some monumental challenges. Swaziland is probably one of the most peaceful nations in the world. In our beautiful nation, we have been hit by a pandemic of HIV and AIDS. Well, from a medical need point of view, HIV and AIDS is just devastating this country. Swaziland currently has the lowest life expectancy in the world and the highest HIV rate in the world only because of HIV and AIDS. There have been reports that if we do not respond, that Swaziland by 2050 will no longer be a nation. HIV AIDS will have wiped out the entire population of the nation by 2050. Compounding the problem is poverty and unemployment. 69% of the population live on less than a dollar a day. And so the rural communities are in absolute desperate need of teaching and of medicines and just of some emotional and spiritual support. These factors have resulted in a human tragedy with over 120,000 children now classified as orphaned or vulnerable where a significant percentage of the population has been wiped out, where fathers have been taken away, where mothers have been taken away, where the most productive of society has been removed, leaving a significant percentage of children orphaned. It is hardly surprising that in the midst of the unfolding social tragedy in Swaziland, some of the most strategic and creative solutions would arise to bring a beacon of hope to this beautiful nation. We have to provide homes through the church that will look after the physical safety of children, that will develop the emotional stability of children to bring them to a place of emotional maturity. We have to respond to the spiritual need of the children to raise up a new generation that will accurately represent the life and the love of Jesus Christ. We cannot leave the children to suffer. Challenge Ministry Swaziland. This group has a mature vision to provide holistic long-term answers, not only to the HIV and orphan crisis, but to many of the other social, economic, physical and spiritual needs of the Swazi nation. The Challenge Ministry Swaziland vision has four main components. Number one, a significant incubator prototype project being developed in the border town of Bulembu. The goal is to restore an abandoned town and to develop it into a sustainable community that will raise a future generation of Swazi leaders. Number two, a strong focus on developing national business initiatives to provide ongoing financial sustainability to all of Challenge Ministry Swaziland's work. Number three, a tangible and expanding strategy of taking the lessons learned in Bulembu to at least 60 remote communities throughout the Swazi nation. Number four, a continual engagement of international teams and partners in developing all of Challenge Ministry Swaziland's projects and initiatives. The crown jewel of the Challenge Ministry Swaziland strategy is without question the prototype project being developed in the border town of Bulembu. At one time, Bulembu boasted a population of 10,000 people, with all the necessary infrastructure to service a vibrant community, including a hospital, schools, and even a golf course. Unfortunately, in 2001, the town of Bulembu was forced into liquidation, leaving an entire community abandoned. Challenge Ministry Swaziland and its partners saw incredible potential. What if this town could be transformed into a giant center to minister to a generation of children whose lives had been devastated by HIV AIDS? How could this property be used to raise out of the rubble of a national AIDS pandemic a future generation of Swazi leaders who would be whole in body, sound in mind, and be spiritually prepared to rebuild a nation? Many of the children that, that we have currently in Bulebo come from throughout Swaziland, particularly rural communities, and we are privileged to have a complete care solution for these kids. 
So kids are brought into either into our baby home, uh, where they are nursed from one day old, or into a welcome center if the children are slightly older. Many of the kids who come into the program have never used a flush toilet, they've never slept on a mattress. Some of them have lived in such conditions that they don't even know how to run. The kids are then taken through a preschool, which is based very much on biblical principles. We focus a lot on character training. We have highly skilled teachers and some of the best schools in Swaziland now. The kids then go through a very systematic process of diagnostics and taken into our primary school. Again, we have one of the finest primary schools in Swaziland now with qualified teachers from throughout the world. And already we are seeing some of the best results for kids in Swaziland. And this is despite many of the children being four to five years behind academically when they come into the program. Lastly, they go into our high school where they are given a wide variety of subject choices that will make them relevant in whatever community they go into in Swaziland. And then finally now, as they step out of that, we are providing vocational training and skills development and also providing a number of exit strategies where the kids can either go into a gap year where they qualify for certain university places, we're providing scholarships for that now, or into practical job placements. Undergirding the prototype project in the town of Bulembu is the second pillar of the Challenge Ministry Swaziland strategy. It is a strong focus on developing national business initiatives to provide ongoing financial sustainability to all of its projects. The Bulembu vision is very clear. Number one, it is to create a sustainable community. And number two, it's to raise a future generation of Swazi leaders. And these two sides to our vision helps us determine what businesses and enterprises to bring to Bulembu. Is the business sustainable and can it add to the economic upliftment of the community? Does it provide jobs? Does it provide a platform for upskilling and skills training? Does it provide a healthy outlet for the children who are coming up through our programs so that they can be trained, so that they can become productive, uh, contributive members of society? As the town grows and as things develop, we're finding more and more business opportunities that are worth investigating and worth finding out. We don't want to just trial and error, we really want to make sure that by the time we step out, we, we're stepping out into a solid, solid project. But yes, currently running seven different projects and all of them running successfully. We have uh, grown the timber enterprise where we actually no longer only use the timber on our own property. Uh, the profitability from the, the sawmill is currently carrying around a fifth of our total cost. We are, we are currently growing that out and there are still many opportunities building up around the project. For instance, power generation, you know, we're now in a position where we have got enough biomass to be able to produce our own power to be sustainable too on the property. So we're investigating that and, and seeking funding for the power generation. And yeah, there are the timber opportunities coming up. The water project at Bulembu was actually donated to us by Challenge Ministries. Actually, it would have started in Mbaban and uh, because of constraints around the area here, it was donated to Bulembu. Since then, Bulembu has grown the project substantially into uh, also bottling uh, smaller bottles and are now really focusing quite heavily on the distribution of those bottles. And it is an amazing project, working extremely well and has got a very good growth potential. Okay, first of all, in connection with the B project, um, it was started around four years ago and has now grown into the largest uh, beekeeping enterprise in Swaziland and we are finding a very good honey flow taking place on Bulembo. Again, in Swaziland, it's an amazing project to be able to roll out amongst the communities. The dairy project, we mainly run Jersey cows, which have got a very high butterfat content within the milk, which is very, very healthy for the kids. The project is, is run with excellence and the dairy has now grown into a dairy with around about 120 cows and is continually expanding uh, through different donations that we get. A project also working very well at Bulembo County, contributing around 4 or 5 percent of our total need in the way of revenue. On the lodging front, uh, we of course try and attract uh, tourists from around the world that are keen to either drive through or see the property. But what we're finding more and more is uh, with Bulembo becoming such a large project based on sustainability and that it really is and, and at that scale people really want to see it they really want to see what is going on it's no longer just a passer through and actually spending bed nights at Bulembo 
So, uh, so the lodge has had, is now having between five and 6,000 bed nights a year. And that in turn is, is again a very good sustainability project and it's working, working well as an income generator for, for Bulembu. The conference facility has got already are finding uh, different groups in Swaziland utilizing the facility which is very exciting. But ourselves at Bulembu we're becoming more and more intentional about training and about raising up the kids in certain areas and it's an amazing facility even for us to be able to use as training is what we've been focusing on that has been rolling out and, and we feel at a, at a high success. The bakery was again a donation that made into Bulembu. We started up, it's currently producing around 500 loaves of bread a day, mainly for the, the community within Bulembu and of course the orphan feeding scheme, but it is uh, extremely nice for everyone in town to be able to have fresh bread. So, uh, so it, it really fits in very well and carries itself and, 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 and really fills a, a space within the town. Our craft centre at Bulembu is an extremely feel-good uh, project because you know, ladies, ladies are coming in producing amazing goods. Yeah, but yes, again a project that, is, that has worked amazingly well, We've got a beautiful centre. Ladies over the last five or six years of training have become amazingly skilled at the products that they make and it's also very exciting to see their growth. The third major pillar of the Challenge Ministry strategy to impact Swaziland involves taking some of the best lessons from Bulembu and bringing them to remote regions of the nation. Bulembu has been an unbelievable incubator for the kids in the program for character development. And we've now realized what it takes to take a child from the impoverished, HIV-impacted communities that they're from and to grow God, inspired, spirit-filled children that are relevant to their community. And from an enterprise perspective, we've realized that we can take the prototype, the role model, the model that we've developed in Bulembu, and we can take it out to communities so that rural communities can become sustainable. So the long-term vision now of Challenge Ministries is to take the prototype of Bulembu into rural communities through a program that we call In Community by Community. And we have determined that each of these sites can potentially impact 10,000 people. There's almost no limit to the number of people that we can impact in Swaziland by using this model. The first ICBC has a beautiful preschool, living quarters for visiting teams from overseas, a pastor's home with space for up to 12 orphan children, and numerous water and agricultural projects. The church is also used for teaching and training purposes, and is also a community center that is used as the base for medical clinics and outreach programs. Teaching and training is our bread and butter. Without it, we would just be wasting out our time. It's so good to empower people so that they can look after their own families and their own communities. And just, it's very straightforward teaching. It's, it's hygiene, personal hygiene, house hygiene, kitchen hygiene, nu nutrition, safety. It really empowers them and then they can make a difference in their community by sharing the word and passing it on. Pastors for the ICBC centres go through three years of training. They do a full Bible school program, plus get training in community development, agriculture, life skills, and entrepreneurship. Pastors here in Swaziland, they are greatly honored in the communities. It is where the community people can run to. Um, for us to reach out to the community, we, we have to have a pastor. We have a vision to impact this nation where little sustainability projects back every church. These churches become central to the community, central places teaching on sexually transmitted diseases, on healthcare, on primary health, on hygiene, on teaching people people skills like computer skills, teaching them how to drive a car. We believe Swazan can be saved, that the children can be reached, but we need your partnership to achieve this. We cannot do this alone. The final component of the Challenge Ministry Swaziland vision is the engagement of international teams and partners 
in developing all of Challenge Ministry Swaziland's projects and initiatives. We've currently been utilizing all the funds coming out of our sustainability projects, investing them straight back into the, the orphan kids and to put them through school and to be able to grow that side of it, uh, but to the detriment of the businesses. So we really do need to get to a point where we can utilize the funds coming out of sustainability projects to either grow those projects in themselves or of course start new ones. So where we really request outside assistance, it is still us identifying different businesses that can work and funds to be able to start those businesses. Sometimes businesses are big and they need a substantial funds to be able to get them kick-started as a start. Secondly, international partnership involves individual and church groups visiting Swaziland for short or long-term periods of time. Uh, Mission Impact is designed to bring in volunteers from all over the world uh, to really experience Challenge Ministries. So they can stay for two weeks to nine months um, and just really get involved to really make an impact. Um, they work out in the rural church projects with Challenge Ministries. They work uh, volunteer with our children's homes and our orphans. Uh, they work with medical missions like the Luke Commission and even uh, pray at the local hospital. We are open to anybody. Obviously we focus on the ages of 18 to 30, that range, but this year we even have a volunteer that's 62 years old. Um, there's really something for everyone. It's a time to really get an impact on yourself as well as impact the nation of Swaziland. We spoke to some of those who are currently serving as helpers with Challenge Ministries about their experience. This experience in Swaziland has a changed me in many ways. Just being able to play with the kids, I mean, it's just been absolutely amazing. Going into the communities is very different. It takes a bit of getting used to, but you learn a lot about the way people are and the way people live and how much we should appreciate what we do have and what we don't need to have, but we think we do. You expect coming over here to do something for the people here in Swaziland mostly and the thing that I least expected was to be ministered to through my experiences, through my work that I've been doing. I come from America where everything is always out there, you know, and you get so desensitized. So when I looked into their eyes, I immediately became softened and a part of them. They became a part of me. I can't explain it. So that, that alone was such an experience and I'm just having an awesome time. This international partnership finally involves child sponsorships of concerned people from outside Swaziland. $35 a month will go towards sponsoring a child's full care needs, including education. 22 pounds if you live in the UK a month will co-sponsor towards helping a child's full care needs. In South Africa, 250 rand a month in a co-sponsorship system will help care for a child. As Swazis, we've responded to this tremendous need out of a calling and a recognition of the need. However, we cannot do this alone. This has to be done through the body of Christ around the world. There needs to be a partnership between like-minded organizations, individuals and churches. To come into this nation, we look to partner with organizations to meet the need of the orphans where they can be physically cared for, emotionally they have their needs met, and to be brought to spiritual maturity. To prepare a nation and a generation to lead this nation into the future. Challenge Ministry Swaziland is more than just a feel-good story of doing something significant for others. What has been developed by Challenge Ministry Swaziland is something of a prototype for the global church and for the global community. Challenge Ministry Swaziland provides a prototype of what is possible and of what can happen when people of faith and people of finance join together to create a godly holistic approach to society's problems. Please consider partnering with Challenge Ministry Swaziland and become a part of this unfolding miracle.